Hello, welcome to another Alpha Strike We Play video. My name is Adam and I'm joined by my friend Taryn. Hey buddy, how we doing? Good, so we're talking about three new different types of missile ammunition for our series. More missiles. Yeah. Every time he thinks we've finished, we do more missiles. That's I it. keep pulling more missiles out of mm -hmm. my butt. All right, so let's Swish do this. In. Yeah, let's do it. Swish. Okay, so in this video we're talking about Acid, acid. Follow the leader. Follow the leader and thunder. Thunder. Okay. Thunder. Yeah. So, thunder is one of my favourites, but we're going to start with acid because good. alphabetical. It's, yeah, well, good. it's the first one in the list. Mm -hmm. um, this again is another one that's fairly specific use. Okay, so it's basically after the invention or recovery of ferrofibrous armour and all the other sort of stuff they came up with a way to mess with that mm -hmm. because it was interfering with everybody's ability to hurt people. So, it uh, functions as a standard SRM with the following exceptions. Acid SRMs, they call them AX. So, AX SRMs suffer a minus two on the cluster hit table. Not good. But they inflict a base three points of damage per missile against units using any form of ferrofibrous, ferrolamellar, laser reflective or reactive armor, Ooh. as well as any unit that has a bar value, which is a, a vehicle-based uh, armor rating, uh, of five or less. May be modified by special armor rules. Against all other armor and structures and structure types, an AX SRM inflict the standard two points of SRM damage. Conventional infantry multiply the damage inflicted by AX SRM attacks by one and a half, rounded up. <clears throat> uh, so basically it's an anti-ferrofibrous missile. It only works in SRMs and MMLs, I should have said at the beginning. Uh, and it's in a sphere only, and it's experimental. Hmm. But um, if excess damage from an AX warhead destroys the last of the armor in a given location, no damage carries over into the internal structure but subsequent AX missile hits directly against the internal structure will inflict normal SRM damage. Okay. So they don't even do the bonus damage against normal, um, <clears throat> against in a, in a internal structure. Uh, they only do it against the different types of funky armors. Uh, and they're incompatible with the Artemis Narc or Streak. Right. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. Three points per missile against someone if you know they're taking weird armors. Oh, um, <laughs> sorry, we've got a dog plague over here as well. Poor so little guy fell down. <laughs> um, Don't do that. Poppins. So it's three points versus the the specific types of armor that you know people are going to try and fit onto their funky mechs. If you know they're doing it, yeah, then you can get bonus damage. If you mm -hmm. don't know they're doing it, you can take it maybe, but. Meh. That minus two to the cluster hit table is an off-putter for me. I'm like, eh. But, hmm, you know. There was a story that I read in one of the one of the house source books or something. And it was when they were discovering the ferrofibrous armour. Hmm. And it was the Federated Sons. Or the, I think they were the Federated Commonwealth at the time, but it was the Federated Sons side of it, I think. Yeah. And what it was is they were basically laying a trap for the Capellans. Okay. So they let the Capellans take take the technology or whatever, steal it away, <clears throat> and there was a flaw in it. I was going to say it was it. modified <laughs> intelligence. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they went and fitted it onto their mech designs or whatever, and then uh, the Federated Sons came along and attacked the planet that they knew had it, and they put this gas, and it started Basically still burning it off. It so off. I think that maybe that's what it was, but it was, yeah, it was pretty cool. I have to try and remember where I read that story. See, that's it was how you do wars. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's it, but it was just, it was funny. Poor Capellans. Oh dear. They're still going though. They're like the smallest ass. They're still going. They'll still keep going. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, acid, so we, eh? mm. yeah, acid. Again, fairly specific. A lot of these missiles are fairly specific. Some of them are completely useless outside of very special conditions. Um, you should probably find that but the, the majority of the clan Omnimex or whatever seem to have ferrofibrous armor. So that would be very useful to have. Yeah. And a lot of people, if they're modding mechs, will put 
Ferro fiber sample on there. Yeah. Especially if they're modifying clan mix. So make sure you use the ferro fiber mm. And if you've got someone who gets all weird and takes like stealth armor and reactive armor and that sort of thing, then this yeah, you know, do it too. It, this will bugger them up, basically. Yeah. Mm. It's only one extra point of damage and you've got a minus two to your cluster hit table, but yeah. Extra point of damage. Go go for the style points. That's right. Exactly right. Uh, Alright, so what's what's the next one? So follow the leader missiles, FTL missiles. They go in a standard RM or MML, obviously. Okay. So they're improving uh, missile grouping to oh, increase nice. the damage done to specific areas by a network guidance system that locks onto the first missile to hit the intended target. Um, and because they sometimes follow the wrong warhead, it never saw mass production. So it's an experimental thing. <clears throat> they both use it, so Clan and Innisfear use it. Um, follows the same rules as standard LRMs with the following exceptions. Uh, they suffer a plus two two hit modifier, reflecting its occasional tendency to follow the wrong warhead. Um, on a successful hit, FTL missiles receive a plus one roll modifier on the cluster hit table but rather than resolving these missile hits in groups of five, they all hit the target with the same location. So all FTL missiles that hit the target will hit that location. So it's pretty good. Wow. Uh, so you get a plus one modifier on the cluster hit, so more of them are hitting, and you only roll one location. Oh. Oh. So it's... it's it's not bad. That's kind of cool. Mm. Um, that plus two is to your target hit modifier is it's nasty, but you can compensate for it with other things. I mean, they're incompatible with Artemis, Narc, or Streak, and are treated as rel regular LRMs if they pass through or into a hostile ECM field. Right. So that knocks that following okay. thing out. Um, mm. But yeah, if you if you have those specific conditions and you can pull off a hit with that plus two hit modifier, then you only have to roll, uh, you roll your cluster, you get a bonus on your cluster, and you only have to roll for one location, then all of the missiles that hit will hit that one location. So you can really yeah. hammer in, especially with the other archer or something with these in it. The LRM20s. LRM20s. The biggest you can. Yep. Ooh, I, I kind of like that. I know it's got that shooting penalty, but I kind it's pretty good. And I, I just, I like the idea behind it. Yeah. That the first missile hit, ooh, that's good. <laughs> boom, 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 yeah, that's where you want it. I love it. I reckon it's great. But yeah, that, that plus two, they even being really, really cool, that plus two kind of kills it for me. But I would put these, I think it's Mikey again that keeps saying, oh, locusts with... LRMs? Yeah. Yeah. So Locust with an LRM. If you, if you bring in them in on this and you've got these, that's actually not a bad one for that small, fast, getting in close sort of thing. But you need to keep your your distance at a seven. Yeah. Or up to short range. So you, you've, you've only got a couple of hexes space to get a really good shot off with these. But if you do, it's all in one location. You'd want to you'd, look if you put a, a good pilot in there, with mm. good gunnery. Good gunnery. You can sort of balance that out. And, oh, I like that. Personally, I'd be taking it in a in at least a ten rack, because yeah, true. Otherwise, you're breaking it into five point groups anyway. I mean, what's the point? Yeah. The, a ten rack will give you up to ten points of damage in the one location. Yeah. A five rack is only going to give you a max of five anyway. So yeah, taking these special ammos for that, why would you bother? But still. Very cool. Yeah, definitely. Very cool. Mm. Um, so let's have a look at Thunder LRMs, one of my favourites. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Fascam round is something that exists at the moment. So it's um, field artillery, scatterable mines or whatever it is. Um, Thunder is the version of that that they use in standard LRMs and MMLs in this particular system. So... You can have Thunder Active, Thunder Augmented, Thunder Inferno, Thunder Vibrabomb. Uh, they're advanced and both Innisphere and Clan use the Thunder. Only Innisphere have the Inferno, and uh, the Active, the Augmented and the Vibrabomb. 
Okay, so okay. those are the different type of minefields that you can lay. I kept thinking cats when you kept saying thunder this, thunder that. I was just like... <laughs> thunder, 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 cats. <laughs> Let's see what's on the screen today. <laughs> um, so they can only target hexes, not battlefield units. Successful attack on a target hex deploys a minefield with a density equal to the strength of a launcher delivering it. Multiple or overlapping minefields may be laid in the same hex for additional damage, but the total density of all mines delivered by Thunder LRMs may not exceed 20 points. Uh, so if you've got five racks on your mech with thunder ammo then you can fire multiple five racks but a single lrm20 will basically fill will do it the hex with a 20 point minefield and that's the max you can have okay so you don't the, roll, you don't roll on the cluster table for that you just no because you're you hitting a, a hex i don't think you have to no you just lay it and that's it so yeah like, oh, cool. um so the one exception to the rule is if a weapon-delivered minefield is laid on the same hex as a minefield placed prior to the start of play, in which case maximum density of the hex cannot exceed 30 points. Oh, wow. Okay. So you can have a pre-designated minefield of 15 points hit by a 20-point weapon-delivered minefield, in which case it will be a 30-point minefield because that's your max. <laughs> okay. Uh... Thunder augmented LRMs deliver minefields that scatter farther out than standard and so deploy the minefield equal to half the missile flight strength to the target hex and, and all the adjacent hexes. Rounding hexes. <gasps> Yummo! Which is cool. Yeah. So if you use that in, say, an archer or something else with an, an LRM 20, then you are getting a 10-point minefield, but you're getting it in, what is it, oh, seven hexes. Really. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, units within a hex, when it's struck by thunder, LRM flight may exit the hex without setting off the minefield laid by the missiles, but all other units entering or passing through a mine hex follow the standard rules for the appropriate minefield, which we'll go into at some point. Basically, you just take damage to your legs if you go through it. There's oh. different things to it, but basically you just take damage to your legs. Once deployed, minefields delivered by an appropriate weapon system function in accordance with their standard game rules. So standard thunder mines, thunder augmented mines use the standard conventional minefield rules. Thunder active mines use the active minefield rules and thunder vibrobomb mines use the vibrobomb minefield rules. Uh, thunder LRMs are incompatible with the Artemis NARC and Streak systems. It's fairly standard for funky ammos. Wow. But yeah. And I do like my minefields. Yeah. They are very, very cool in this context. If you're still in beginner games, then minefields are probably a little bit OP just because of the fact that if you lose a leg, you can't actually move anymore. But in a standard total war game, you can still move even if your leg is completely destroyed. It's just difficult. It's really hard. It's really hard to do, but you can do it. You're not automatically out. Um... But being able to lay all the different types of minefields, including Inferno minefields, which I only learned was a thing a few years ago, which is pretty cool. Um, and being able to use the uh, augmented ones to scatter to multiple hexes. I, I kind of like them. Well, it's good if you want to sort of control areas of the battlefield. Yes. You want your units to be able to go somewhere and you want to protect from where they're going? Yep. If you're using a, a small lance or even a lower than lance value of units, then putting minefields out is a good way to deny, like area denial. Yeah. They can go in there, but if you're taking 5, 10, 20 points of damage or 5, 10, 20 points of heat... If you walk into these areas, then you're going to think twice. Yeah, you're well, going to try and go around. Yeah. I mean, you don't enter minefields lightly. Um, there are So the minefields will also attack a mech that's jumping through there as well. They mm. have um, like a jumping thing. They come up yeah, I think it's the it. active ones or something. Yeah, like. yeah, there's certain yeah. ones. Not all of them, but there are certain ones. So depending yeah. on what you lay there. Some of them have different rules for what they do. So the 
I'm pretty sure the Inferno ones only deal heat damage. I don't think they actually do any damage damage. No. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll go into the different mine types later on. But you can lay them with an LRM system if you take these ammos. You have to take the specific ammo for the specific uh, minefield that you want to lay. Okay, so that's another difficulty, but <laughs> stuff it. Sounds good to me. Instant minefield. Of, yeah, a lot of choices there actually as well. And if you if you think about your um, LRM carriers, oh, there they are again. There they are again. <laughs> you can do so much now. You can do so much. I mean, you've got three LRM twenties on the standard LRM carrier. Yeah, yeah. And you can technically target three different hexes if you feel like it. True. So, bush, bush, bush. bush. bush yeah, you can lay it quickly. If they're all really bented. Good. That's an entire section of the board just cut off yeah, pretty from, much. for the enemy, basically. Um, because that'll be a 10, 10 point in a hex and surrounding hexes, hex and surrounding hexes, hex surrounding hexes. And you could have those overlap because the highest that you're allowed to set with a thunder variant is 20 points. 20. Mm -hmm. If you're only laying 10 down, then you can have those fields overlap. True, that's right, yeah. So... You could do some serious damage with those um, if anyone tries to go through there. So, God, you could let, and yeah, you could cover a pretty big area very quickly mm. as well. Mm. That's pretty nasty. With with ten or twenty point um, fields, yeah, um, and even I think was mentioned the the uh, fact that you could put these into a locust with some LRMs. You could 100% do that and just start laying minefields all over the place, just run around and lay minefields everywhere. The The bonuses for shooting at a hex, I think, would probably negate most movement modifiers and things. Yeah, probably. Um, so you've got that advantage that you could run to the rear of an enemy and start laying minefields in their retreat if the objective, if the objective of the mission is to get something back that way then playing minefields behind them is just nasty. Ooh. Nasty. There is a scenario in the Total Warfare book of Breakthrough. Yep. So yeah. that could be quite handy. You then you just start laying these down, which reduces their... <laughs> have a use of where they're going to go, because they can take damage mm. if they run through it. Yep. That's interesting. And in any scenario where you have a specific location to, yeah. that you, you have to get to, or that you have to pass through, or that you have to do anything in, then laying minefields around the place is just, it's a no-brainer. It works really, really well. As long as you know the rules and you know what you're doing, write the, the numbers down and everything and have it all set up. Yeah. You, you've got some solid damage from those. It will add a lot of bookwork to your games, mm. so consider that. <laughs> a lot of bookwork. A lot of bookwork, because yeah. you have to keep track of each minefield separately. Yeah. And it's it's not always easy to do. Yeah, but I mean, you could get little counters, I suppose, and put yeah, them on there. Yeah, you just That's write the number on there and then adjust it as That's people set it off or something like that. Yeah. If you're using minefields in uh, fairly basic um, games, then you you'd probably just have them as a set and forget, and as soon as it goes off, it's done. Um, and I think that that would probably be it, just a set value. You step on that hex, you take an X amount of damage to your legs. Done. Yeah. Finished. Um, but Very yeah. interesting. That's some interesting ammunition types, actually. Yeah. I still, I still like the idea of the acid one for the ferrofibrous. <laughs> that is kind of cool. And that's, it's fairly specific, but if you know people are taking a lot of ferrofibrous, and like you say, clan mechs, yeah. pretty sure they're all ferrofibrous. A lot of them I are, think there's yeah. a lot of, like a couple of second line ones that I've seen that aren't ferrofibrous, but... Omnimex, yeah, it's all clan ferrofibers. The best of the best mm. for them. So, so and that would, it's not definitely better than anything else, but it's three points of damage from a missile instead of two. Two, yeah, yeah, nothing to scoff at. If you got a decent pilot in there, then it's pretty good. Yeah.
Well, there you go. So let, let's get some comments on these guys. We want to hear um, <laughs> what you think of these ammo types and if maybe you've actually used them. It'd be kind of cool. If you'd like to hear how it went. Area denial with Area your thunder denial. Yeah. Some tactics to sort of share with everybody would be kind of cool as well. Don't leave it up to us. We can't think of everything. We're Tell trying. me how awesome Tandem Charge still is. Yeah. Even though it was a video <laughs> yeah, ago. Because yeah. they're brilliant. Uh, all right. That's, I think that's it for now, I, mate. I, we've I'll we've done our three. We're done. We're done. Yep. Right. Okay. So consider subscribing and thank you for watching. We yeah. appreciate you watching us. Cheers, guys. Cool.